So what is driving in these numbers is the growth of our business in general. Uh, we've seen 22% uh, uh, growth in our net loans. But uh, I think the best story of, of 2017 was the diversification of our revenues. We have a very good uh, growth in our non-interest income, which shows that uh, the bank is doing well in terms of the fee business. But also, it's the first year where we are reporting as a group. And we have now uh, the insurance business contributing positively to our bottom line. And we believe this is the main story to our shareholders and stakeholders. Bank of Kigali is resilient, and Bank of Kigali is now involved in uh, many business lines in the financial industry and offering shareholders a diversification of their income. You did mention something very interesting there, that uh, you did see the loans to customers growing by 22%. That's beautiful growth. But we're also looking at the NPLs, the non-performing loans are standing at uh, 13 2.9 billion rand francs. Uh, what does this necessarily mean for you? So, so our, our NPL in terms of ratio has you know, increased to 5.6%. We believe it's still a good level of risk for us to take. And in terms of provisions, the bank has been very prudent, uh, has always been prudent. But this year, in 2018, you may know that we are implementing new accounting standards that are uh, will, you know, uh, involve taking us banks taking more provisions. So we've been able to be more prudent in 2017, so we can smooth, smoothen out uh, the impact of IFRS 9 in 2018. And we are hoping that our shareholders, our stakeholders, will see that Bank of Kigali is prudent and is only uh, releasing profits that are real profits. What kind of uh, provisions do you have with the IFRS 9, if I may ask? So fr from uh, the difference between uh, BNR, which is our regulator, local regulator, and IFRS 9, is that IFRS 9 requires us to take provisions even for your performing book. You can have a client who is uh, performing very well, but IFRS 9 will require you to take provisions. So we've been doing that with uh, IS 39, which was the, uh, past, uh, the previous accounting standard. But now for IFRS 9, what they want us to do is when you book a loan, you're supposed to look at your clients and look at uh, the future cash flows and say, the probability of this client going bad is this much. So I'm going to take a provision. So the minute you book a loan, also book a provision. This is uh, a bit costly for the business, but we believe it's prudent and it's going to make uh, sure our bottom line is always uh, you know, growing steadily. And, uh, uh, Diane, help us uh, ra ra wrap our minds around the, li the, li the liquidity. We did see the average ratio uh, in uh, last week of December being at 35.0%, uh, which is uh, relatively higher than what, what we saw uh, the previous year. What does this intend to mean? So in December, we usually have in the sector a lot of cash because business is, uh, you know, performing and it's towards the, the end of the year, so there's a lot happening. Uh, people are being paid, the people are spending a lot. So in general, in the Rwandan market, all banks have been liquid uh, historically, which is good because this shows that banks have the liquidity to, you know, make deals. And as far as Bank of Kigali is concerned, we always have this high liquidity ratio to make sure because we are, you know, looking for the next deal, to make sure if one of our corporate clients or our SME clients comes to us, we will never tell him we are short of liquidity, we cannot uh, do this deal with you. So we are ready and this also allows us to invest in, uh, you know, treasury bills, in treasury bonds as we've been doing and, you know, it's also giving us another source of income. Definitely. Now, uh, help us uh, around uh, conversations with a streamlining of assets and uh, where asset growth, where you're seeing asset growth uh, going into. Is, uh, is uh, amortization growing? Uh, what is happening? So our, our assets, I think, are, are, cont are going to grow with uh, loans that will uh, continue to book. We see a lot of demand out there. I think the Made in Rwanda campaign that was uh, launched by government last year is starting to bear fruit and we see many clients uh, coming to us uh, and uh, growing their businesses. I think the, sent the economic sentiment in general is very positive. People are bullish. Uh, when you talk to business people, they are bullish. And we are hoping that this will be a another you know, source for growth. Because if our clients are bullish and want to invest more in their businesses, we believe uh, we are going to benefit. We are planning to uh, be aggressive in uh, manufacturing because we believe it's a good sector. We don't have much exposure in that sector. And we are planning to be aggressive in that sector, you know. And again, it's when you look at, you think about it, it's a sector that is contributing a lot in terms of jobs, value creation. 
and uh, yeah, this is the plan for this year. Diane, allow me to push you on uh, one interesting story. We did see you coming up and saying that you want to uh, list on uh, to cross list on uh, either the Johannesburg Stock Exchange or the London Secu Stock Exchange as well. How far has this conversation gone, and when should we expect to see this happening? So, uh, we are, the conversation is ongoing. Uh, again, when you see what's happening on the Rwanda Stock Exchange, our stock has not been very liquid. We believe our positive results don't translate into high stock prices, which should be the case. So we thought maybe you know, the, the, the answer for that would be to cross list and to have another market be, you know, more dynamic that will offer our investors and our shareholders the liquidity they're looking for and will you know, uh, impact into you know, uh, better stock prices. So the conversation is ongoing. Uh, we haven't decided exactly how much we want to invest. And when we have decided on, on the amount we want to raise, we will start now considering these uh, new you know, pos the potential stock exchanges. So also our price to earnings ratio? So our price to earnings ratio is uh, five, which is uh, posi uh, positive. And because uh, our price is uh, you know, stuck at around 300, we believe it should be somewhere around 450. Uh, so we want to have that uh, you know, liquidity on the market to push our, our prices high, higher. One story that was making a rounds in the media as of last year was uh, this Moroccan bank that uh, wanted to acquire and, uh, bank, bank of Kigali, but that did not happen. Tell us about it. How did it affect the numbers that we're looking at on a, a global scene? So, again, it was a discussion that it happened when uh, you know, business people visit Kigali. Mm. They thought it was, uh, you know, an interesting investment, a very good investment. Uh, we discussed and we thought, because we are listed, why would, should we do a private deal? We are already listed on the market. If we are to raise uh, capital, we should go back to the market. And we also felt it would be uh, unfair to our current shareholders because they've, you know, uh, put their trust in us, and us you, you, uh, giving the bank to, uh, you know, other investors. We thought it was not fair, so that's why we went through a process. We engaged our shareholders and they, they told us, good, you want more money? Please uh, do a secondary offering and we'll be there to support you. So that's why we, we did and uh, we, are, you know, we are pursuing this option. And another thing that are uh, a point of, of, of concern that we want to raise here is that uh, according to the Q quarter four results, we did see agriculture, the agriculture sector now recovering. Does this reflect anything on our credit to agriculture when it comes to BK? So, so the problem of, of the credit to agriculture is, uh, you know, uh, much bigger than just, uh, you know, a good season, good rains. Uh, and this is one uh, problem that our tech business is trying to solve, is what from, you know, what we see, we don't really understand the value chain. Mm -hmm. Now, what our tech business is doing, they want to digitize the value chain of agriculture so we can know, first of all, who are the farmers, what they farm, what fertilizers they buy, what seeds they use, etc. And when we have a good understanding and a good data and knowledge of the sector, we'll be able to lend more to the sector. So we are hoping that this, uh, after this project, we'll be able to uh, lend more to ag agriculture. But again, you know, just the fluctuation in, in rains are not going to, I mean, actually it's making it even more risky. Mm -hmm.